Hi everyone, Kathy Rose here. I'm going to talk to you about the astrological patterns for July 2024. We begin with the Cancer energy pretty strong, and so you see on screen the Cancer mandala. You will see the phases of the moon represented in this mandala, the emotional qualities, the moodiness, the changeability with our moods, and I'm going to develop that as we go along. But make no mistake, Cancer is normally very sensitive and comforting and mothering, but there's a level of intensity that's happening in July that is outside the realm of Cancer, and we're going to talk about that. So let's look at the themes for the month. We have an incredible high voltage moment taking place on July 15th, but it's not just on the 15th. It really is building for those first two weeks of the month when we're going to have a Mars-Uranus conjunction in Taurus. So this is why on screen you see the image of the rocks that are stacked up, because we need to connect with the Earth and connect with the grounded energy and stability of the Earth during this high voltage moment. Um, so I will develop this in a few slides into this presentation and talk to you about what this is suggesting. Connecting with the spirit of the earth is going to be incredibly important, not just to ground yourself, but to remember the spirit of the earth. This planet on which we live is so beautiful. And the nature spirits and the angelic realm and the creativity, um, the sacred energy that happens with the earth. So I'll talk about that also as we go along. That's part of this Mars Uranus awakening um, and then the other thing for July is activating our internal authority. And this is later in the month when Mercury and Venus are in Leo, making strong aspects throughout the month to Pluto. Um, it's important to activate inner authority. All right, so before we get to the new moon and all of those themes I just talked about, let's just focus on the fact that Saturn and Neptune are going to move into the retrograde phase. And this offers us a period that's very important for internalization and integration. So Saturn begins the retrograde on June 29th, the very end of June, stays retrograde till mid-November. Neptune begins the retrograde on July 2nd and stays there until December 7th. So for Saturn, which is transiting Pisces, um, it will begin the retrograde at 19 degrees and move back to 12 degrees. So if you have planets in your natal chart or angles that are between 12 and 19 and mutable signs, mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, or Pisces, then you get very special development from this. And you have to remember that Jupiter is squaring this also. So you're in a high growth phase if you have that. And if you don't know it, guess what? You can schedule a consultation. I'll let you know. <laughs> um, at the same time, Neptune will be retrograde. And the reason that this is so incredibly powerful is Neptune is also in Pisces. And Neptune is the modern ruler of Pisces. So you have Saturn in Pisces retrograde, Neptune, the ruler of Pisces, retrograde. What incredible internalization and processing we get, especially around the issues of compassion, sensitivity, grace, divine love, um, and healing, healing the inner victim. So if you have any leftover bruises about being victimized or unfairness in the world, this, these retrograde patterns for these two planets could help you release that and to remember just how phenomenally loved and supported you are by the universe and how you can connect and manifest that support spiritually at any time. So this is a powerful moment for us um, from the time frame of July to about the end of the year. Much processing will be taking place. So as we move on, let's talk about the new moon in Cancer. Um, it is taking place on July 5th, 6.57 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. This chart is set for Washington, D.C. So the sun and moon conjunct at 14 Cancer 
you know, the moon loves being in cancer. This is mothering energy, sensitivity, nurturing, comforting. So certainly anytime we have a new moon in cancer, it is important for you to ask yourself, what would comfort me at this time? Um, what's the best way to, to nurture myself moment to moment? You know, it changes, right? And we're not trained to ask ourselves this. And it's so incredibly important. Um, it's also a great time to do a little technique that I love to do um, right around the time of that new moon and to create your own holy water. That's what I call it anyway. And that would be to get a bottle of water. And if you get a plastic bottle of water, you can use a Sharpie on the outside of it. And you can write any key words that you want that are going to energize and bless that water. And then you can put your hands around the bottle and fill it full of blessings, fill it full of the kind of healing energy you want. And really be mindful as you're doing this. Of course, you can do this anytime. It doesn't have to be just the new moon in Cancer. But when you do this and the moon is in this water sign, and then you take sips of that water for the next week or so, you're going to be infusing yourself with all of that beautiful healing energy that you charged that water. Um, it, it's a great technique. And we can indeed create our own holy water that is not just for ordain, ordained priests. So that's one way you can use this new moon in Cancer. Now, the biggest aspect that's taking place during this lunation is the fact that Mercury is in Leo and will be opposite Pluto. The exact opposition will be a few days prior to the new moon. Uh, Mercury will enter Leo on July 2nd. It will make the exact opposition on July 3rd. So a few days before the new moon. And Mercury in Leo. Okay, so there's a lot of pride in how we think and how we communicate, which if we use this on the highest level, that means confidence. And that means connecting with your inner authority. Um, it can go too far sometimes when it is aspecting Pluto, and that can go into this sense of the way I feel and my thoughts and my opinions are the right ones and yours are the wrong ones. That would be a misuse, but it can go there. I mean, we're in the middle of a political season here in the United States, and that energy is all around us right now. But if you want to use this on the deepest level, working with this lunation in Cancer, this Mercury-Pluto energy can help you to go to new depths in connecting with the universe, in knowing you are loved and supported, in thinking profound thoughts. But certainly it is a time for you to speak with clarity and speak with confidence. Okay. Now, if you look in this fifth house, if you look at my cursor here, you're going to see that Mars and Uranus are moving close together even um, on July 5th, Mars will be at 19, Taurus at that time, Uranus will be at 25, the exact conjunction is going to take place at 26. So that energy is already active and alive during this new moon in Cancer. So again, another reason to manage your mind and manage your communications so that you are infused with love, you are infused with sensitivity, and that you are infused with confidence. So this is an, a very interesting new moon in Cancer. If we move forward a bit, <laughs> um, it says embrace your inner queen. And of course, if you're male and you don't identify with queen, you can say king. I chose the word queen, royalty, really, because we're going to have Venus entering Leo. And Leo is very much connected with royal energy. And Venus um, has a feminine quality about it. Venus enters Leo on July 11th and stays there until August 4th. And when Venus enters Leo, we get to take pride in our own appearance. We get to walk with our shoulders back and our head held high, um, walking and communicating and socializing with a new level of confidence and it can be beautiful. 
it really can be beautiful because, you know, Leo rules the heart chakra. So Mercury and Venus will be in Leo starting July 11th and using that energy wisely, engaging the heart chakra with it. But you know what? In the United States, July 11th is the day they are going to announce the sentence for Donald Trump. And um, what's fascinating is if you look at the next slide, July 12th, Venus will oppose Pluto. Just as you remember in that new moon video or new moon chart that I showed, Mercury was opposite Pluto. And now on July 12th, Venus will be opposite Pluto. So you see the image I chose on screen, which is people protesting. Well, this is one possible manifestation and not just related to what I just said about the sentencing of Donald Trump. But depending on what the sentence is, there could be protesting on either side. I'm not being political here. I'm just reading the energies. Um, and not just in the United States, worldwide, it's going to be fascinating in the middle part for the first two weeks, really, of July um, to listen to what the public is saying, um, because it's quite likely they're going to be speaking up. Um, and there may be very loud voices. So be mindful of this. Um, Venus opposite Pluto can also be um, going very, very deep in your capacity to love. So that would be a different way to use this energy. But we have to remember that Mars is working toward the conjunction with Uranus during this entire time. And this energy is volatile. So be very mindful. Engage your presence in your energy field. Um, infuse it with love. Infuse it with confidence. Um, walk with dignity because a higher level of Leo is going to be dignity and grace. But be aware. I mean, it could be an interesting time. So it brings us now to July 15th when we have this very, very dynamic aspect of Mars conjunct Uranus at 26 degrees Taurus. So the image on screen is electricity, and that's because Uranus is filled with electricity, um, sparky energy, high voltage, as I said earlier. So it's going to be crackling in the air around us. Now, it's nothing to be afraid of for your own personal use Mars conjunct Uranus could be a time when you are feeling very, very free. You are connected with your sense of independence. You are connected with your sense of uniqueness and you are not afraid of what other people think. That could be a very positive use of Mars conjunct Uranus. Um, 26 degrees Taurus is a very strong degree. It's connected to the fixed star called Algol which um, you're going to hear all kinds of warnings from people saying, don't lose your head. Um, and it's true. You, you may need to breathe. You may need to stay very grounded so that you don't get super agitated. Now in the world, there could be agitation. There could be people who are angry or impatient. There could be people who are protesting. Um, there could be high voltage energy. July 15th in the United States is when the GOP convention begins. I have no idea why they chose that date, except it represents upheaval. It represents change. It represents a surprise um, and potential agitation. So this is a really important time, and I hope you use it in your own life well. Another symbol for this Mars conjunction to Uranus. Um, you see the volcanic eruption here. Uh, people could be ready to erupt. And the Earth may have moments where it needs to outflow. <laughs> um, so again, I'm not trying to plant fear here. I'm not saying we're going to see enormous volcanic eruptions or earthquakes. It's possible, though. It's possible the Earth is going to um, react because we are talking about the sign Taurus and we are talking about the planet on which we live. Um, do your very best to connect with nature and connect with the spirit of the earth 
and send love to our planet. Uh, we are in direct communication with Earth. And you know, the interesting thing in astrology is we talk more about the planets in the solar system than we talk about the planet on which we live. And this planet has a spirit that is so beautiful. It's got a feminine energy to it. So much lovingness from the nature spirits in the angelic kingdom. So during this conjunction, mid-month, take the time to listen to the plants, to the animals, to tune in with your higher senses because Uranus wants to unlock those. You know, Uranus is connected with the awakening energy. So it's quite possible you're going to be getting downloads of higher communication flowing through you. And you can sense what plants and animals are communicating. Um, let that go to the next level. But certainly, if you want to help the earth, send love through your feet while you walk, send love when you touch animals or you touch plants, you know, engage with this beautiful planet we have because we can affect what happens on the planet by doing so. All right, so if we move forward a little now, we have on July 21st, a full moon in Capricorn. Now, the reason this is so fascinating is because this full moon takes place at the last degree of the sign, and we will have had a full moon in Capricorn um, already at the first degree that happened in June. So June 22nd, we had full moon in Capricorn at one degree. Now in July, we get a repeat of that at 29 degrees. This is a very powerful full moon because it's going to be conjunct Pluto. Um, and Pluto is going to retrograde back to 29 degree Capricorn this fall. So this is a moment where um, we get to explore the hierarchy of power and we get to explore our own sense of our ability to accomplish our goals, our ability to use strategy, um, to be efficient, um, to be practical, to achieve what we want to achieve, to allow power to flow through us mindfully, with grace, with love not to misuse power. So there's so much about this full moon in Capricorn that is talking about power, misusing it or not. And at the same time, we're going to have an exact square between Mercury and Uranus. So, you know, this full moon happens just, what, six days after the exact Mars-Uranus conjunction. You'll see on the chart here, Mars has moved into Gemini just barely for this full moon. But that energy of Mars and Uranus working together will still be very present, activated by that square from Mercury. So it's going to be highly, highly charged um, for about the first 21 days of July. And you are going to need to keep your head about you and allow the fantastic awakening that could take place in your own consciousness. You know, Uranus is a planet that deals with freedom and liberation. And going back to this full moon in Capricorn, again, as I mentioned just a moment ago, this is about understanding you can be a conduit for spiritual power if you are using it well and mindfully with integrity. Open yourself up to be a hollow reed, to let it flow through you without corruption, because that's what this is trying to achieve. All right, so one last thing. Um, just after this full moon, Mercury will enter Virgo on July 25th, and it is going to prepare for a retrograde in Virgo, which begins August 5th. Um, it will begin the retrograde at 4 Virgo and stay retrograde until August 28th. Mercury in Virgo is very, very strong. So um, in the August uh, forecast video, I will talk deeply about this Mercury retrograde and all that it offers. And you know, if you've listened to my videos in the past, I always say, don't be afraid of Mercury retrograde. It can be incredibly productive. But on July 25th, when Mercury enters Virgo, things start to tone down a bit. And um, we're going to see a different communication style coming in, which could be incredibly productive. 
Mercury is going to retrograde back into Leo, though. You will see that on screen. It goes direct at 21 degrees Leo. Um, quite interesting pattern we have here. All right, so my final thoughts for the month of July is a quote from my dear friend Noel Till, my friend and mentor in astrology. He's passed away now. Um, but it says, astrology does not have the answers. Life has the answers. Astrology guides us to these answers. And this is what's important to me. The planets don't have power. We have the power. We get to utilize them. We get to engage the planetary energies, but we are not controlled by this. So, you know, I, I don't ever want to worship astrology. I want to respect our free will and our choice and our own development as humans using the astrological energies for the highest good. All right, so that wraps up July. Very intense, profound, wonderful, exciting energy in July. And I am blessing you and sending you much love and reminding you to embrace adventure this month. Embrace the awakening and the special kind of high voltage energy that can take you to the next level. And if people around you are getting volatile, or intense. Observe and remember to keep your heart chakra open. You don't have to engage. Okay, bye for now. Sending you much love.